Coming up on the RelaxShacks.com channel, we'll be giving away an Envy Tiny House Heater, so be sure to subscribe for your chance to win. Details in the description. And we have hands-on Dietrichson Brothers workshops coming up in Boston, Seattle, and Omaha. Hi, I'm Mason Moyer, and you're inside Pee Wee. <laughs> I was trying to do the Pee Wee. <laughs> <laughs> strong fear of commitment yeah <laughs> and I'm just not meant to be kind of in the normal life that most people are um, and I've been camping and outside most of my life and uh, as an adult after I had my kids and was married I decided that I kind of wanted to get back to who I was which is a nomadic person and I bought a motorcycle and I toured on my motorcycle for about three years where I was averaging about 5,000 miles a month. And that was me living out of a duffel bag. I had a house back in Boulder that my kids resided in while I was gone. And uh, yeah, it just evolved. I knew that I wanted to, after I sold my house, I knew that it was a matter of just finding the right vehicle. And I started doing research on everything ultimately coming down to the half size was exactly where I could be pulling my motorcycle. Now, what do your kids think of this? Uh, you know, like, do they think mom is, mom's badass, or is <laughs> yeah. it mom's off her rocker? Yeah, my youngest thinks I'm off the rocker, is fully embarrassed of me. It's funny is that he has dreads and long, and he'll stand in front of me like we have nothing in common. I'm like, yes, nothing, nothing <laughs> at all. Now, I'm looking around, and your, your style here, the sense of style, there's a lot of, like, architectural salvage and funky it just has this really cool lived in um unique feel where did you source a lot of this stuff what's the story behind some of the things we're seeing here well two things one being from minnesota i always wanted a cabin on wheels and um two i really firmly believe that we have everything that we need we don't need to make any more stuff on this planet like we, if we just reused and repurposed we would be fine and so for me literally everything in here besides my convection oven the refrigerator the stove top so my electronics and my TV has been upcycled and repurposed um, everything from the wood came off of a friend's um, barn and some we sourced um, just from a, a recycled place and um, the wood has so much depth to the grain it's so craggy looking that it's just great it's like old man skin or yeah, old right, woman skin totally. but it's it's fantastic and the trim on this is all pickets off of an old fence okay but I I love um, scavenger hunting just the waste and it, it makes me vomit I just feel like we have everything we need out there and it's just that most people want to they want shiny new and that's not better it's really not better I like things with history well shiny new sometimes comes with the attachment of it being predictable mm. you know the cookie cutter stamped out neighborhoods and I walk in here I'm like this place is absolutely unique and fun and there's probably a story behind just about everything here I'm looking around right now because I haven't seen all of it myself you have I'm noticing if for a bus that's how many square feet 98 98 you have uh, we just did a box truck conversion for a film we're doing that's nine, I saw that. 98 square feet as well yeah. yeah very different looking this but that's you know kind of the point everyone's got their own thing you have quite a bit of storage actually for such a I, small space it was uh, when I laid it out and designed it that was my thing is I'm addicted to boots and jackets yeah. and uh, you know I base layers you know, you can have three or four base layers. And, um, so for me, yeah, it was all about how can I utilize every inch, even where I'm sitting at in this corner where you would think it'd be an obsolete corner actually has two layers, um, and you may magnetically lift off. It has this clubhouse feel in here, which is, I love it. It's so whimsical. The window you have there, I think you were saying that originally wasn't there. You later <laughs> yeah. cut it in. Yeah. It's funny is how many people have come to this event and been like, I totally watched your YouTube video where you cut that hole in there because it was a full solid wall. But what I noticed was the difference in room temperature. So my old dog is always cold down below. And it was a good 10 to 15 degrees cooler. And I'm, I can be in northern Minnesota in January. So I, was, uh, I decided to cut that in for that as well as the fact that I love to have coffee in bed in the morning. So I wanted yeah. something to be able to put on it. What about things like heating, you know, yeah. the loo, 
like what, your so systems? So I have three inches of closed cell foam insulation in the bus, and then also um, my curtains uh, are actually this product called Warm Window. And Warm Window, it was um, originally manufactured for cabins in the uh, northern part of the United States. And what it is is Reflectix batting on both sides, and then a decorative cloth and a blackout. And um, so it's five layers on my windows to really kind of seal them up so honestly for me being from minnesota yeah. i don't really use heat that much and when i just crack these windows like this just bring the curtains down the passive heat that i get from the sun warms this bus enough for me um i'm gonna get a dixon eventually up towards the front i'm already wired for all of my propane okay. uses i just haven't needed it yet so i haven't been motivated to get it um and my loo is a nature's head and um, compostable toilet. Yep. Yeah. I did the closed cell foam insulation. So when I sprayed that in, I wasn't technically as smooth with my strokes as I probably should have been. So I actually ended up spending like a day and a half just sawing, you know, carving, it all back yeah. down, carving it all back down, which is not pleasant. <laughs> now, did you originally fasten some like furring strips as your attachment point? Nope. The ribbing runs this way. Oh. Um, yeah. So it, these are just attached right to the ribbings. So as long see. as you didn't screw too overzealously through the roof, you're exactly. good? Exactly. Oh, well, okay. and I mean, the ribbing was, you know, it's like two and a half inches, Is three really? inches. Yeah. So um, once the, I just had to be careful of making sure that I knew where it was at while I was, you know, and we had marked. So when I was holding it um, with a friend, we had marked up in the front so that we kind of knew where it was running at um, so that we didn't have to redrill and redrill. But yeah, no, it's right into the ribbing and that it, that's actually fairly deep. Now, how long have you been in here? A year and a half in this bus, and um, it took about eight months to build it out, and about six months into it, I uh, kind of moved into it. Um, I was getting pressure. I had rented a place, and I was doing everything in my backyard, and I still had my 1987 full-size school bus in my backyard that I was kind of ripping apart in downtown Boulder, which doesn't go over very well. And um, I was in the process of selling the one bus, and finishing out this bus in my backyard was just all construction material. What's been your greatest lessons from any of this? Like, you know, a lot of people early on like, oh, this is how I think it's going to work out. And later you think back and like, oh, mm -hmm. what a fool was I? You know, fortunately on this build, I don't really have that because I um, have learned my lesson in a few other vehicles. So the thing I always tell people, and especially somebody, like I get a lot of people who come by and they say, I could never do that. I've never built anything in my life. And I'm like, listen, I never have fully built out anything in my life either. What I know to be true in any business and anything you do, if there's something you don't know how to do, you get a consultant or somebody who knows what they're doing to work with you. And there's no shame in that game. No, you know, no. there's, we have schoolie groups and there's, there's Facebook groups and, and things where we all talk about what have you done? What haven't you done that work? So do your research and have a have find somebody who can consult with you because there's no shame in that game so you work from on the road running your businesses both yeah so i've been in fact that's a lot of the times when i'm not outside like just playing with everybody it's usually because i'm finishing up stuff like the very first night i got here i just sat on the computer all night and um i had stuff i literally just opened up a health and wellness space in boulder and we had our grand opening the night before I came here, and um, I had I still had supplies and other things that I had to order. And I'm we're right now getting ready to produce and manufacture wool hair and extensions and dreads, which will be a national company. So we're in that whole launch process, and and then launching United Mobile Living. Um, so you're kind of like a laid back workaholic yeah, <laughs> at the same time. I'm totally Type A. Like, yeah. 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 It, it, but. It's this lifestyle that affords me to be able to do that. Because if I had to go sit in an office and do that, yeah, I couldn't do it. I just, it would drive me crazy. But I can be on the road all day long. And I've worked it so that my rhythm and my schedule, um, I'm one of those crazy people that's up at like 3, 30, 4 o'clock in the morning. And I love getting up at that time because it's quiet. The dogs don't move. I'll lay in bed and... You walk work. around, no one's out, yeah. The, the few times I've been up at that early, or just stayed up that late, yeah. <laughs> last night, <laughs> it gets quiet in the world. Yeah. I love it. It's, to me, the best. Yeah. So, yeah, I'll go to bed early and get up early and have that time, and it's amazing.
Now, if people want to find out more about you, social media stuff, I mean, do you have a site? Yeah. You said you had some YouTube videos or yeah. a channel. Where can they go? Mason Moyer. Um, so if you Google my name, I think there's like 12 pages, um, and you can find out anything that I'm working on or where I'm at. All right. Hey, it's been an absolute pleasure. Yeah, right back at you. Thank, Thank you, you so much. Yeah, I love this place. <laughs>